So last week I did two different videos. The first video was focused on the young person with plenty of time, and it was focused on growth ETFs. But as we get older, we, you know, we look at different products. And so I did a video for the 50 and over crowd, and that one was focused on less volatility and providing a little bit more income. But of course, there's a lot of people out there that focus on that income. So today I wanna to talk to you, my dividend sluts, my income whores, and I wanna calm you down and show you my approach to this. Now, I know you're gonna be able to find certain products with much higher yields than what I'm gonna show you. I have no doubt about it, but that's not necessarily where we should focus. So again, this is my approach and yours can be definitely different. And that's what is great about these types of channels, right? Because we can start the conversation. You can comment down below, tell me why you think I'm an idiot or why you think I'm right, and we can have great dialogue. So that's the idea so we're gonna run through some of these different products and at the end we'll take a look at it all together and see what kind of yield we can get to at the end after we look at the products because that's my approach so let's get started now i don't want this to be redundant so if you've seen this before jump ahead there are chapters listed down below but for me i'm going to start with any kind of portfolio like this with an anchor that I can count on that can offer me some growth in a bull market. And for me, that's SCHD. So you see that right here. We've talked about it before. Stop and read about it. And here's the strategy as well. So again, pause if you're not familiar with it and go through it. I've talked about this so many times on this channel and I did it last week as well. It's a great strategy. It's all about dividend growth, right? So over a period of time, you should see growth within this fund. And that's perfect for somebody that's looking for income over the a period of time right you're going to continue to get that growth hopefully with this strategy now real quickly very low expense ratio i'm always paying attention to that when you start looking at income etfs you're going to see these all over the place so it does matter it's a big point and the expense ratio for this is just 0.06 percent so again if you're new to this that means six dollars for every ten thousand dollars that you invest will go to pay their staff and everybody else that's working over there at schwab to take care of this fund now it does yield 3.37%. I know that's not huge. We'll get to bigger ones, but just understand this is what I want to use as an anchor and offset some of those that might not have growth, right? Because I hope SCHD in a bull market will be able to perform well and put some money back in my pocket. Now what's in this? Well, you can see the top 10 holdings right here and it's focused on financials, industrials, technology, consumer defensive and healthcare. You can see all the things down there like Broadcom, Verizon, Merck, et cetera, et cetera. So again, we're gonna move through this fairly quickly, but you can watch those previous videos when I go into more depth and I've done a full review. I'll link that above as well on SCHD. Now, what I really like about SCHD obviously is the total return that you've seen over a period of time. So this is a 10 year chart of SCHD. And you can see right here that it's actually outpaced the S&P 500 on the total return over a 10 year period. So that selection criteria and everything else that goes along with this, I love this for my portfolio. So the next product on my list is JEPI from JP Morgan. This is the equity premium income ETF. And a word of caution to people that are trying to develop an income portfolio. When you're looking at products like this, you shouldn't go immediately to yield and say 11.57%. That's awesome. I'm adding it. You should try to understand as much as you can about JEPI. And then eventually lower on the shopping list should come yield and go, okay, and that's nice too. Um, if you approach it from yield perspective first, it's probably going to lead you down many bad roads. So just a word of caution. But JEPI has a, a basket of low volatility stocks, and then they wrap that up with about 20% of equity linked notes, which are very complicated products that I urge you to go and try to understand to the best of your ability before you go and you buy this type of product. But the expense ratio is 0.35% because they are managing all that. So it, you are paying a little bit more for that management. And uh, yeah, they pay out every single month and it's 11.57%. So uh, pretty outstanding yield. And that's going to be the one that's going to kind of push our yield up. But uh, we want to understand the product to the best, as, as best we can. Now, uh, this focuses on uh, financials, industrial, health, healthcare, consumer defensive, technology, and utilities. But that will move around as they add and remove products from this as well. Those current products are things like Exxon, Progressive, AbbVie, and MasterCard, and Bristol-Myers, and Coca-Cola. So pretty common everyday stocks that are in there that act as anchors. Now, if we look at the price return over a one-year period, because this is a pretty new fund, we're going to see that it, it's, it's held up pretty well just in price return for 2022. I say pretty well. It's uh, kind of in line right, with the S&P, but add on that yield, and you're gonna see that it's done quite well. So I'm, I'm also comparing this to Devo, which we'll talk about in a minute. 
And then if you look at total return from one year, you can see that it's actually outperformed quite a bit versus the S&P 500 in a bad 2022 when the market was really getting beaten up, right? Because of those ELNs and the makeup of this, it's, it's actually added quite a bit. So performed quite well. The next one I have in here is VYM from Vanguard. This is the high dividend yield ETF. I'll move through this one really quickly, but expense ratio is extremely low, yields about 3%. Now I like this just like I like SCHD as an anchor in the portfolio. And you can decide how much of SCHD and how much VYM you would have. I would probably balance it out about 50-50 because I think they're both going to perform pretty well depending on the type of market. I actually like the makeup a little bit more of VYM and their current holdings versus SCHD, but I like the model that SCHD follows over a longer period of time. So again, very well balanced financials, healthcare, consumer defensive, et cetera. It's got things like Johnson & Johnson, Exxon, JP Morgan, Procter & Gamble, and Chevron, things you would find in an everyday portfolio. And if we look over a one year period, this is the total return when we factor back in dividends as well, you're gonna see that VYM last year in a tough market held up pretty well. And that's kind of what I want in an income portfolio. I want some things that are gonna offset some of the crazy volatility that we're gonna have in some of these other funds and kind of act as an anchor. So last year, total return, it actually was positive, 1.11% while the S&P was down almost 9% total return. So the next one that I picked out is SPHY. This is the Spider Portfolio High Yield Bond ETF. This probably isn't for everyone and I probably wouldn't have too big of a component of it, but I like a little bit of bond exposure. And this is high yield, which means higher risk, but I like having this in there. So if I'm trying to, if I'm starting to get the shape of a portfolio, I would consider something like this. Now this particular one has an expense ratio of just 0.1%, which is pretty darn good for a bond ETF like this. The yield is 6.25% and they pay that every single month. Now you can see the five-year performance, not very impressive. Bonds haven't been on a great run or anything for sure. You can see what their top 10 holdings look like. Some that you've probably heard of, right? Like DirecTV and Caesars Entertainment and you can see the coupon rates there. And then down here at the bottom, 1,939 versions of what you see here are within this ETF. Now, if we look at a uh, five-year chart in comparison to the S&P 500, total return, only 14.76%. So obviously it hasn't had the best five-year period here. Could it improve? Maybe, maybe not. I don't think we should just rule out bonds because of the last five years though. I wanna have a little bit of balance. So that's one of the reasons I included it in this to kind of get our, you know, get, get some ideas moving around the head here. So the next one I have on my list is DIVO or DIVO. We've talked about this one a lot as well. And this one has a basket of stocks and they move in and out of these at different times and they sell covered calls against these positions. They generate some income that way. So this one's got the highest expense ratio, I think of anything that we're looking at. And that's 0.55%, so that's pretty significant. They do play monthly, and the yield is 4.77% right now. Okay, so uh, it's pretty consistent based on what they do. And the majority of this yield is actually coming through natural dividends. Uh, a small portion of it is coming through those covered calls, which if they decide to get more aggressive with those, the yield could go up. But are they going to do that? I don't think so. They'll probably maintain the same way they've been doing it for the last period of time now. They've got healthcare, financials, energy, again, pretty good balance, Visa, Chevron, McDonald's, Home Depot, United Healthcare, and such and such. So what I liked about this one actually is the performance that they've actually provided uh, since I've owned it, right? So if we go back to total return one year last year versus the S&P 500, you can see this return 2.18%, the S&P was down you know, nearly 10%. So a big improvement there. And again, if we look at it over a five-year period, total return, it's actually beat the S&P 500. So I'm impressed with how they've been able to manage this. And that's one of the reasons that I like this product. The next product I want to look at here is JEPQ. This is just like JEPI, both from JP Morgan. This is like a sister to it, right? But this celebrates it on the NASDAQ versus the S&P 500. Now, the problem with this one is we really don't have that much information. It only goes back to May of 2022. So maybe wait a little while and get more information on it, see how it performs. But obviously a more volatile fund because it's going to focus on those growth stocks in the NASDAQ. Expense ratio is 0.35%, which is exactly the same. Pays out every single month, yields 9%. That's not even based on a full year. So it's actually slightly higher than uh, JEPI at the moment based on a full year. And uh, what's in this? Well, the top 10 holdings as far as stocks go are Microsoft, Apple, Alphabet, Amazon, and NVIDIA. 
So really focusing on technology communication and some consumer cyclical are the biggest sectors. Now, all we can look at is a six month performance. There's not a lot to look at yet. So you can see it's lost about 4% total return, even adding those distributions, uh, which hasn't kept up with the S&P at the moment. So, so I, I, one to watch and maybe add a little bit into the portfolio if you wanna get started with something like JEPQ. So the last one on my list for today is IDV. This is the iShares International Select Dividend ETF. And again, I like to look outside the US. I don't wanna just focus on the US only. So this will give me some international exposure, just like bond exposure. So I like that kind of thing as I build out a portfolio. Now the expense ratio on this one is 0.54%. It, you have to, it pays a quarterly dividend of $1.99 and that equates to about 6.81%. Now the one year and the five year charts are not gonna look that impressive. But if we look at what's in here, we're gonna see financials, basic materials and industrials and utilities from all over the world, right? And uh, total number of holdings here is 136. You kind of see the top 10 down there at the bottom. So that's kind of the makeup. And we can look at a 10 year chart, total return, adding all the dividends back in there compared to the S&P 500. The S&P 500, you would have done great over the last 10 years, whereas IDV would have only returned about 45%. So you can see the discrepancy between those two. I mean, huge, right? I get that but I still wanna have some exposure to something like this. It could be a very small exposure, but I wanna build out a portfolio like that. If I'm looking at something like this, this would be something I'd consider adding. Now, if we summarize those seven funds that we just talked about, we can get a chart similar to this. And I'll try to add a link down below if you wanna download this and kind of play around with it, you're more than welcome to. But we got our ticker symbol here. We got our alternatives, maybe some other ones to look at. And if you're curious about the U under Devo, that's because I like to uh, trade a lot of options myself. And a lot of my setups are similar to what Devo does. You know, I buy lots of stocks and I sell covered calls and I sell puts against different positions. So it's another way to manage it yourself. And I've got plenty of videos if you want to kind of watch that uh, as well. Uh, we got our expense ratios listed. We got our dividend yields listed. How often these are paid. How much, what are the assets under management? And then the one, three, five, and 10 year total returns for each of these funds. Now this is the weight that I used to get to 100%. So for example, 25% SCHD and 25% VYM. Now for a lot of people, they're gonna want more than that, but uh, this is where I started. And with that, if we work through the numbers, we're gonna get about a 5.65% distribution yield. But because tax rates are different for different people in different states, I tried to estimate what my tax responsibility would be. And uh, altogether, that puts me in about a 30% tax responsibility for these funds, right, at this rate. So that, is, that ends up being the final yield. And you can see average. And what I did down here at the bottom is you can change this number as well. So this is an example of if I put in a $800,000 investment into this, how would it look? So my $800,000 with these weights would yield 5.65% before tax and about 4% after tax, which would mean $45,000 yearly or $31,000 after tax or $3,765 every single month or $2,650 after tax. So that's an example of how that all breaks down. So a couple of other interesting numbers that I pulled out of here. One is the average price return. And I got to this number by looking at the average price return over a five year period for each one of these, not the total return, the price return. And I said, if these were equally weighted across all seven funds, what would my return be if I assumed JEPI was zero and JEPQ was zero? If that was true, you get an average price return each year for about 1.61%. So that was pretty good to see. You know, this is a, a great way to evaluate it in my mind because this says not only am I getting 5.65% every single year, 4% after tax, but I'm also getting a 1.61% growth within my funds. So just one more way to kind of look at it and see, does this work for me? And finally, the one feature that I knew I had to have out there if I was gonna create a spreadsheet like this and it's engaged slut mode. So if you're one of my dividend whores or yield sluts out there, I've got you covered. Right, so if you, it says no right now, but watch. If I type Y-E-S, that's how we spell yes, and I hit enter, you're gonna see the weights go from that to boom, right? And suddenly we go to a 9.67% yield. But also notice that our taxes went up, 
if it's in a taxable account, I know. And uh, we have our after-tax uh, distribution yield total went up quite a bit. So you can always engage slut mode, but not necessarily recommended. I struggle to find really good high-yielding products out there. As they say, there's no free lunch. So when I see something, my radar goes off and I'm immediately suspicious versus like I'm gravitating towards it to buy it. So there's lots of covered call ETFs out there that I do not like. There's lots of CEFs out there that I do not like. Lots of products. Now, if you have one that you really like, uh, let me know down below. I, I like alternatives. I like exploring alternatives as well. So let me know what you think. Now, if you did find any of this helpful, please like and subscribe. And again, any questions, have it down below. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night. Boop.